it's worth reminding people that there is absolutely nothing wrong with picking and choosing someone's battles. If you are going to be visiting family members over the holidays, if you're going to be with people that you may or may not agree with, and some of those people feel like getting up in your face about things that you believe or don't believe, and just your point of view on things, and want to really prove you wrong, and want to make you uncomfortable, and want to make you feel like you've lost a debate, or something along those lines, there's nothing wrong with refusing to engage them. We live in a society that sort of champions the idea that you should always be able to stand your ground. And that if you can't stand your ground, that means that your position is inferior. That means that you were unprepared to defend it. And that if you were unprepared to defend it, then it must be wrong. And that's a really silly idea. There is value in deciding to prioritize yourself and in deciding not to engage someone in a debate, especially someone who doesn't really care about the facts, but is just an aggressive and boisterous person who wants you to feel uncomfortable. If you decide to stand your ground and you decide to have this debate, this discussion, this argument with this person, that's really cool of you. I'm not going to say that that's more or less cool than if you make the decision to just walk away from that, whatever that means in that specific context, but it's fantastic that you are deciding to have this discussion and to share points of views and to try to learn from each other. If you make this decision, I want you to consider the sort of place where you're going to be having these discussions, because this is really important. If you're having a one-on-one -on -one discussion with someone, that might be better for trying to convince them to change their minds personally. But if you're in a group setting, then what you could be trying to do is show that there are other points of views aside from the ones that they are supporting and the ones that they are using as their own in that particular discussion that are as, if not more, valid than their particular points of view. And that's something that can be done. That's a perfectly valid goal. In fact, I would argue that that is probably the goal of most formal debates, as opposed to showing the person that you're arguing with that they're wrong, but actually showing the audience, the people who are listening, or the people who will be listening to the argument later on, that you are correct, or that your point of view is at least as valid as theirs. That's an important thing to keep in mind when you're trying to have discussions with family members and with friends about controversial things like religion and politics. I want you to pick a goal when you are trying to think of how to debate someone, such as a family member or a friend, over the holidays. If you have to be stuck in a debate with these people, if you have to be stuck in a debate that makes you uncomfortable about a topic that you feel strongly about, I want you to go ahead and already have a goal in your mind. Because if you have a goal in your mind, you don't have to focus so much on the snappy one-liners and sound bites that are going to come out of that particular debate. You can focus on that goal ahead of time, and you can think of the best way to lead anyone who's listening to the debate, including your opponents, to the particular point of view that you want them to have or the particular realization you want them to come to by the time the debate is over. It's perfectly okay to be nervous. It's perfectly fine to be anxious about someone being able to talk better than you can, about someone being able to speak more forcefully and more confidently than you can. That's perfectly reasonable, but that shouldn't deter you from engaging in a debate that you want to have or expressing a point of view that you have that you care about. And it's easy to think that you mess up if you stutter or if you get visibly and audibly nervous, but you aren't messing up. You aren't messing up just because you're anxious, because you weren't expecting to be ambushed by something. Even if you have the thoughts in mind, if you aren't the person who starts the debate, you are probably going to feel a little bit taken off guard, especially if the people that you're debating are coming at you real aggressively. And that's perfectly fine. It's okay to feel those ways. But what you need to do is you need to think about the arguments that you're going to be making and you need to realize that they're more important and that they don't lose any value, they don't lose any reason to be believed just because you're nervous while you're making them. Because everyone gets nervous. People are shy, people are anxious. It's okay to feel those things in the middle of a debate just like it's okay to feel those things when you are speaking publicly. 
I'll be the first to admit that this video is a little bit of a departure from my usual video making style, but since the holidays are already here and people are already having conversations with their friends and families, they're already having these sorts of debates, I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to put this video up. I want to have conversations with people. I want to hear what sort of advice they need, what sort of advice they'd like to have heard when they were younger, and I want to create the sort of content that helps people feel more confident in picking their battles and in knowing what to do when their battles arrive and when they are engaged in said battles. I think that the holidays are an interesting and important time for lots of families. I feel like there are lots of family members who start up these sorts of debates and then they end up learning way more than they realize. This is a time to have valuable conversations. But the reality is, it's important that the people who have the most to teach other people feel confident and feel ready and feel able to have these sorts of battles with ease and without anxiety, or at least with as little anxiety as possible. I'm hoping that I can create the sort of content that helps people. And if you have advice on how to help me help people, I would love to hear it. I hope that you guys are having a absolutely wonderful day, and I will hear from you soon.